The number one highlight from my recent trip to Japan is no doubt a visit to Motomas factory, which has many, many sub factories inside this one large complex, including the Kazoo Racing plant, as well as the legendary Lexus LC500 plant. And I've done a, a factory tour of that one already, so please take a look at that. But for this video, I'm going to be focusing on the main high volume production section of the Motomach factory, uh, which produces many different models. And it is fascinating because it has some of the latest technology and latest technique for Toyota production system. You can see many interesting stuff. For example, here, you can see a forklift pulling all these carts, but there is no driver. Uh, and there are so many countless interesting technique and method they used to produce the best cars in the world. And what was the biggest highlight for me on this particular visit? Well, would you believe it or not, I accidentally pushed what we call the Andon switch, which is a switch used to stop the line in the case of a serious problem. I'm aware of how the Andon system work, but I didn't know the, uh, the button they gave me was the actual working button. I pressed it by mistake and lo and behold, I actually stopped the entire production and they came to uh, rescue me or help me to figure out what's going on. Uh, and I was so embarrassed. Uh, yes, I did stop the Toyota production, and that is definitely a, a very memorable situation for me, but also very embarrassing. But there's so much more I can explain to you about the Toyota production system, so let's get right into the factory and explain from the beginning how this whole system works and why Toyota continues to build some of the best cars in the world. Welcome back. Believe it or not, I have been to Motomach factory more than 20 times in the past two decades or so, but I came away super impressed because I saw so many changes at this amazing plant, which has been around since 1959, and it's actually one of the largest plants within the Toyota family. It also produces many different models on the same line, including the Toyota Crown, the hydrogen engine, Mirai, as well as a number of other models. So let's get um, right into the details and start right from the beginning and see how Motomachi plant actually functions. So we are just starting the Motomachi factory plant tour. Right off the bat, we are at um, a Mirai hydrogen uh, section here. This is the hydrogen tank preparation line. You can see the actual high pressure tanks down there. And it's all, again, uh, flowing in a Toyota production system style, one piece at a time with a Kanban system, which means Kanban means that will actually trigger the next parts to come. You can see the visual system on the screen there. It's telling you what the tack time is, whether they require overtime, and what the actual production is in comparison to the plan time, and whether or not any of the stations are having a problem. So that's just the beginning of one of these lines right here. And by the way, you might be wondering, what is tag time? Well, that is basically the heartbeat of a customer in terms of how often they're buying the car or how often they're demanding the car from Toyota and represent the speed at which the line is moving. Here at the Motomach plant is approximately a minute and a half or so. So every minute and a half, a car comes off the assembly line and that dictates the rhythm or the heartbeat or the production. So we just entered the factory here now and you can see the Mirai um, models coming through. This is just a body shell with the tank already produced. You can see um, also sub-assembly right here and all of them is moving along in the Kanban style which means the materials are triggered just in time and uh, it's just an incredible clean factory. Everything looks brand new even though this factory is old and it's been around for a very long time. So let's keep on moving along. So one of the key um, aspects of the Toyota production system is that they can produce many different models in the same line, even though they could be a very different model. And that allows them to basically produce many different models in a flexible format, and that's the strength of it. And one of the tricks to that uh, system is the fact that they have what we call the kitting system. Think of kitting system as a kind of bento box idea, where you pick all kinds of different parts, put it into a bento box, or in this case a kit, and then deliver that kit onto the line where the cars are being produced so that the workers and the production members do not have to figure out which parts to put into the car. The kit provide everything they need for that particular workstation and they install those parts onto the car. There's more than um, 8,000 different kinds of parts that are required to produce these cars. Nine different models to produce on the same line. So this kind of kitting process has to be done prior to the production workers receiving the body. 
so that they can receive the kit or the bento box, pick up the parts, do the work, and then the car will continue to move along the line. So that's a very important aspect of the Toyota production system. So I know it's a little bit difficult to see everything right here uh, over in the mezzanine here, but basically the basic flow is that after the body is painted, it drops into this assembly area, or what they call the trim area, and then they move along here, getting some basic components installed that are required for drivetrain, for example. Then they turn around here, comes down over here, keeps on flowing toward that way, suspension and other components are installed, goes all the way to the end, it turns around and come back over here. And this is the kind of final assembly line where things like the interior and the seats are being installed. You can see many different models are produced. You can see the van, you can see the Mirai, uh, sorry, that's a uh, Crown. Uh, you can see the Lexus RZ over here as well as uh, BZ4X. In fact, there is a, a Subaru Solterra there as well. So you can see right here, mixed modeling, many different types of model, even different brands are all moving along and you got the Kanban parts located right on the line so the big parts are all here and then also the kitting. This is the kit right here that's been delivered and they're going to be handed off to the line side and they install from there and continues to move. The music you're hearing is when there's a potential problem then they call for help and that's what you're hearing right now. Another very important crucial point about the method for preventing any kind of defect in the production system is the idea of a andon. Andon actually means like a light. And what it is is that they want to signal if there's a problem. So for example, the car is coming off the assembly line here. And if there's a potential issues that can delay the production, they will push a button that says, I need help. You can see it right now. The yellow one came, number four, and therefore there's a problem on the number four. They're asking for a leader to come and help out and they have to try to solve this problem within the tag time of 104 seconds and if the problem is solved then it doesn't stop the line but if it exceeds the tag time of 104 seconds the line will actually physically stop they can also push the button to completely stop the line if it's something more critical so they're still calling for help but you can see the andon got cleared uh, the number four line is back to green and the line never stopped and by the way, the reason why they now converted the andon to a push button instead of what they used to be a string you pull is because they want to make everything wireless and not have so many wires up on top or on the ground. And you can see right here on the production floor, there's no more wires hanging off the bottom. Everything is clear off the ground and it's free of clutter. And that's what makes it more uh, interesting. It's a digital andon. This is the old andon. They're still using it. But the, but the old system is that you can just see it if there's any problem. Everything is green right now, so there is no problem right now. But this is the old method, still in use, but now most of the uh, lying andon is using a digital panel like that. Now let's take a quick look at this andon board, just so that I can explain to you how this works. First of all, when you see all green, that means all the stations are working fine. There has been no andon buttons pushed and therefore everything is moving along based on the tag time, so there's no problem indicated. Uh, but on the bottom, you see a bunch of numbers. Plan 205, which means they're supposed to have produced 205 cars at this moment in time, which is 1.51 p.m. Uh, so since the start of the shift, they are supposed to have produced 205 cars. The next box is actual at 186, which means that they actually produce 186 cars as opposed to the 205 that they're supposed to be doing. And therefore, they need to do a little bit of overtime today and estimate it 0.25 hour in order to catch up and finish just a little bit, which is uh, 19 cars that they're short. Uh, and this is probably due to some issues they might have had earlier in the day. And of course, the time just means that's a current uh, time of 1.51 p.m. So this explains a little bit about Andon, and it's perhaps one of the most important boards within the Toyota production system. You can see right here, they're also using AGVs, which is stands for Automatic Guided Vehicles. Right underneath the door, you can see a little machine or equipment that's actually moving this whole platform. And they're actually communicating with each other. It moves in sequence, and the door is delivered to the car so that they can match up with the right car with the right VIN number down the line. So one of the interesting thing is uh, this 
platform that they produce. This is part of a Kaizen work. Kaizen means continuous improvement. So the workers came up with the idea, you have to put all these parts in and the whole platform moves to go along with the, with the car. But this thing is heavy. So in order to make the whole platform easier to move, they actually added a cantilever, counterbalancing weight right here. These are uh, basically two liter pop bottles that's filled with uh, old um, nuts and bolts. And this, the weight of this balances out so that when they finish this platform and it has to come back and move, and they have to move the platform, it's only four kilogram of force now, which is easy to push. Before the Kaizen, it was 15 kilogram, way harder to push and therefore it just requires less effort to manage this work. It's a very important part of the work because it involves the steering mechanism. And once again, you can see the whole platform moving with the car, it's moving along with the car so that they can have a little step, add or install all the parts. And then when they finish, this thing goes backward with a very simple light touch. Really good example of what Toyota does to continuously improve everything. Now you're gonna watch this guy He's going to finish this line and then uh, well, he went to do something else on the other side. I mean, these guys are working so fast. It's incredible speed, incredible dedication to producing some of the best cars in the world. And again, there's no defects because if they find a problem, they're going to stop the line. You can see the two buttons here, yellow and red. Yellow button is for um, when there's a problem, but it's not so serious yet. They push the yellow button, call for help and then when they press the uh, red button he actually stops the line so he's gonna now push it back see they just have to literally push a little bit and it goes back with the counterbalancing weight the whole cart moves backward because the weight is being lifted off by this system what a clever idea like best examples of that uh, this guy. Hi. and this is the he was nice enough to bring the switch so this is what we used to call the andon and on pull. Oh, Sorry, I didn't. I thought this was a dummy button, but actually, I pressed the real and on. I stopped them. I'm gonna go to the show. I thought that was a dummy switch, but I actually stopped the production line. Oh my goodness. This is not funny, perhaps. Suyumasen. Uh, as you can imagine, I temporarily, temporarily stopped the Toyota production line. I thought it was a sample button, but I pressed it. Not only did I press the yellow button, but I also pressed the red button, which stops the line. So uh, they lost, I don't know, 10 seconds of production because of me. Who knows? I gotta pay back some money now. That was a really interesting, interesting incident. Right. Uh, and, and just to add one more thing, when I pressed that button, um, the actual team leader came running here to get help because he thought it was a real problem. Of course, the problem was me. Uh, but once again, the yellow button is to call for help. A team leader will come right away to try to get the problem solved before the line gets stopped. Now, if it exceeds attack time at some point, if it takes too long to solve the problem, the line will stop. Otherwise, if there's real emergency, a real problem, they can also press the red button. And if you press the red button, the whole line stops right away. Well, folks, I did that for the very first time in my life. I stopped the Toyota production. So this is what I screwed up. I pressed the button. In fact, I pressed both buttons and I stopped the production line for the first time. I will never forget that. Sorry, Toyota. I stopped the line. The last concept I want to explain is Heijunka, which in Japanese mean to balance things out or to level things out. And this is an important concept because they're producing up to nine completely different models on this line. And therefore, each one of them require a slightly different time to complete the task. In order to make this work, they have to actually change the number of cars per hour in terms of mixed modeling and that therefore they have to use a uh, Heijunka method. So let me explain to you how this works because it's also just one of the key ingredients in the Toyota production system. So there's a very interesting concept I do want to explain which is critical to the success of Toyota production system. Here at the Motomach factory they produce a number of different models. So as an example if you compare a BZ4X to the minivan Noah 
Uh, they even produce a police car and then Mirai, which is a hydrogen fuel cell car. That's the most complicated one. You can see the amount of hours it takes to produce these cars in the general assembly area. 8.8 .8 hours for BZ4X all the way to 11.3 hours for Mirai. So there's a two and a half hour difference. And even with the difference, they are able to produce all the cars in the exact same line by using a method called heijunka, which is a Japanese word that means to balance things out. And that means, for example, here, this is um, what we call tack time. Tack time is the heartbeat of the production or how long it takes for each car to come off the assembly line, basically. So right now, in the same line, BZ4X, NOAA, police car, and Rise are being produced, and they're all moving at the same conveyor belt speed of 104 seconds, which means that every 104 seconds, uh, or almost two minutes, I guess, a car will come off the assembly line. That's what the attack time means. And, but yet the Mirai actually uh, takes the longest to produce, more than 104 seconds, and BZ4X have less time required, so up to 30 second difference. So how do you manage four different cars, or actually there's more than four, but in the same line, and still able to move the line at the same speed? And that is by mixed modeling. So you have a different sequencing of cars. So for example, you will have more BZ4X than Mirai in the same line. So when you add them up, then on the balance, overall, as an average, it comes off, uh, the line can move, I should say, uh, for 104 second tax time. So every 104 seconds, the line will move to the next station. And that's a very important concept for this to work. And this is uh, really the pioneers of Toyota who came up with the concept of Heijunka or load balancing a line. Now, in case you weren't aware, I actually teach Toyota production system or lean manufacturing at an MBA level. So I am very familiar with this concept, but even so, I was blown away at how much improvements they have made to their legendary Toyota production system in the last few years. So this was a truly eye-opening visit, and I hope that I can share more about Toyota production system with you in the future. But for now, I'm going to sign off, and hopefully you can uh, subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much.